Good evening, guys. Thank you very much for joining today. And it's 7.59, so I think some of you have already joined the meeting, so welcome. And thank you so much for making the time to be here. So guys, today we're going to continue with, um, I think we have just one topic that we haven't discussed uh, last week. So we're going to finish with, with anything that has to do with section number for today, and then we're going to move to this um, new section, right? Section five, and this coming Thursday, we're going to be working with the final exam, okay? So thank you guys for being here. So first things first, right? And the first thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm going to pass the attendance, okay? Just give me a second. Give me a moment, and I'm going to look for today's date. So I really, really hope you had a wonderful um, weekend, right? Let's see, I'm going to hide this. Very good. So, Alba Dir Portal Diaz. Is she here? No, not yet. Um, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Ana Francisca Garcia Nieto. Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Eh, Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutierrez. Here. Thank you, Ceci. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Presente. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Eh, Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Jenny Lizeth Campos Martínez. Present teacher. Thank you. José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. José Francisco Peña Peña. José Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Jovito <laughs> Torres Amaya. Present. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Maria Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Marta Ruth Enriquez Reyes. Present. Thank you so much. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Eh, Nady Ibis Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you. Rebecca Estefania Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Rodrigo, thank you, Rodrigo Melendez. Ahora, Rodrigo Daniel Melendez Maye. Present. Thank you so much. Eh, Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. Present. Thank you. Eh, Jensi Marlene León López. Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Zulma Beatriz Pérez Galdames. Present. Thank you so much. Let me check here on the messages. Dice Albadir present teacher. No problem. Ahorita le ponemos aquí su asistencia. Luego dice Thank José. You. You're welcome, José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Acá está. Ahorita se lo ponemos la asistencia. Eh, Marvin Joseph también. Ahorita. Eh, José Francisco Peña. Ahorita. José Francisco Peña and Diego Anthony también ahorita Diego Diego Anthony and Sandra Patricia también ahorita bye chicos ya está <laughs> thank you so much Ana Francisca García Nieto ah bye okay Ana Francisca ahorita Ana Francisca there we go bye they no worries guys que yo vuelvo a a pasar la asistencia later. You're welcome anytime. 
Okay, so thank you so much for being here, guys. And we're going to continue talking about some of the things, you know, that we have been discussing during these past days, right? And let me tell you that if you have questions, guys, you are more than welcome to uh, bring your questions to class, right? The idea here is that if you have any doubts with any topic, if you have doubts with the vocabulary, right? So I, I am here to support you. I'm here to um to help you right with um probably those particular things that um was not quite clear or that um probably you found a little bit um you know kind of confusing right i have to say guys i have to say that the topics that you had for this module were very good i really liked it i really liked it and the reason why i liked all the topics um, is because it takes you from the intermediate level to the advanced level. So here, guys, the idea is for you to put it into practice and you can do it, okay? And let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what we have here. Now, we were working in the previous um, unit, right, um, the, that, that had to do, you know, with given recommendations and opinions that was the grammar focus right of this um, specific unit the name of the unit is there should be a law right that was unit number 15 and we were discussing this past week right we stopped here we were discussing this past week um the different options that we have uh, to give recommendations and opinions and i was saying <clears throat> It's important, right, that um, you consider the options that you have. Remember that you that you have several options. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven options, right, that you can use. So any of those, you know, will be uh, totally fine. Okay. Now, what else? We just uh, practice a little bit, right, with. Um, this exercise, then we moved on, right? And I wanted to point out at something here, guys. And that was the uh, word power. Remember that the name of the unit was this, there should be a law, right? And here we had some vocabulary words that probably uh, you need to handle, right? I don't know if you have uh, like questions about you know the vocabulary that you encounter about the social issues I don't know if you have you know uh, like kind of um, questions about the, the the different options that we have there no what um, does company down, down sizing Mm -hmm. Company downsizing, very good question. Guys, company downsizing is whenever you have to cut expenses, right? Or what we call in Spanish, recortar costos, right? So uh, when that happens, you know, they have to, I'm going to open here my little board, okay? They have to cut expenses, right? Expenses. Son gastos, right? This is uh, whenever uh, or reduce costs, right? Reduce costs, right? This is a uh, company that would size in is whenever, you know, the company is going through a very difficult moment and they have to decide, they have to lay off some employees. They have to let them go because they cannot longer have them, you know, working for them. Um, yeah, for instance, is whenever you have to fire people but it's not because you want to or because they were bad employees but it's because you cannot longer pay you know them their salaries uh -huh. so I don't know if I answer your question Elie. yes of course very good excellent anyone else guys that has questions about the vocabulary that you found there Teacher, yes. <laughs> I think it's illiter illiteracy. Let's go ahead and double check. No worries. I will. I think it's illiteracy, but let me see. Literacy. Okay. Remember, right? As I showed you last time, you just write that type. I'm sorry, typed the word, and then next to it, you write meaning. So let's listen to the pronunciation of the word over here. 
Let's see, let me share the sound. There we go. Illiteracy. Yeah, this sounds like more like British, right? So uh, let's see, in Lingui, we have the two options. We have the, oops, no, sorry, what's the other one? Illiteracy, okay, Lingui. Okay, uh, illiteracy, no, let's look for Lingui. Lingui, illiteracy. And we're going to type it here. Oops. We're going to switch from English to Spanish. And that's going to be e leader. I see, I think it was. Yep, this one. And listen. Illiteracy. Illiteracy. Uh -huh. That's the North American version. And the British version? Illiteracy. 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 Illiteracy, right? And as you can see, right, whenever you're unable to read, Right <clears throat> or right? Well, neither read or write, nor write. Mm -hmm. So that's illiteracy. Okay. Then we have a different, you know. Um, well, actually, the, the 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 exercise was about this. Which of these issues are problems in your country? Right. Check the appropriate boxes. So we have company downsizing, which is something that happened during the pandemic, when we were, you know, in lockdown, when we were sent home ethnic conflicts, right? Whenever um, we have, you know, um, people from other cultures, right? That are living, it's like a cosmopolitan, you know, uh, country or city life, for example, in the United States, right? Then we have graffiti, right? Which is those art uh, walls that, you know, this type of, I would say art, uh, street artists, uh, but, I mean, for some people, they are artists, for others, they are not, but it depends how you see things, right? Then we have gun violence, right? Uh, we have illiteracy, inadequate healthcare, right? So whenever we have, um, well, healthcare itself, right? It's um, like, for example, here, El Seguro Social, that's healthcare, right? So inadequate healthcare, we have lack of affordable childcare, Lack of affordable child care. What does that mean, teacher? It's whenever we have, you know, that uh, service, health service for our babies, right? And that control, let's say, that we need to have with, uh, for, I mean, uh, with our kids from the day they are born until they become adolescents, right? So that's a child care. Then we have noise pollution, right? A lot of noise everywhere. When we have peak hours, there, there's traffic jam, and we have a lot of noise pollution, right, all over the cities. Stray animals, stray animals, guys, um, it's whenever we have, well, actually, this is a problem in El Salvador, guys. We see a lot of dogs and cats that do not have owners, right? And they are, they are just on the streets, you know, and they just um, survive there. Those are straight animals, animals that do not have an owner or that do, do not have a house, a home, right? And obviously we have street crime, okay? So those were like some words or vocabulary um, that this unit contained about social issues and that's important guys for you to know remember that whenever you go through um exams right uh, or um interviews right and if they ask you this type of questions you can go ahead and you know use these type of issues right so i'm going to repeat each of them so you can listen to the pronunciation okay so company downsizing Company downsizing. Ethnic, company downsizing. Yeah, ethnic conflict. Ethnic conflict. Then we have mm -hmm, graffiti. Or well, this is it is similar. This is similar to Spanish, right? It's just graffiti in Spanish and in English it is graffiti. Then we have gun violence. It's not gun, it's gun, right? Gun violence. Then we have illiteracy or analphabetism, as we were saying before, right? Illiteracy, inadequate, inadequate healthcare, inadequate healthcare, lack, 
lack of. Whenever you use the word lack of, it's when something is missing. Okay, falta de, right? Lack of affordable child care. Affordable. Affordable child care. Noise pollution. Straight animals. Listen, straight animals and street crime, right? Street crime. No decimos stray because stray includes a letter E at the beginning, right? It's just it's down straight animals, street crime, okay? Very good, guys. So then there was a uh, practice, okay? What, it was a reading, and I think, guys, the topic, it, it's kind of cool, right? These topics, remember that um, if it's not in the um, in the platform, we try to go directly to the topics that... Um, are in the platform, but here's the thing, guys. Para los que de repente dicen, teacher, yo leí y tengo preguntas en el manual, más que bienvenidas, chicos. Y lo voy a decir así, así en español rapidito. I love your questions. I love, you know, whenever students ask questions because that challenges me, me reta a mí, ¿verdad? Y aprendo con ustedes. Así que whenever you have questions about the manual, they are more than welcome. Okay. So, there is a reading in that section, and that is how serious is plagiarism? How serious is plagiarism? Guys, what is plagiarism? Do you know what it is? Anyone? What is plagiarism? Have you committed plagiarism? <laughs> Tell me, guys, what do you know about plagiarism? Anyone? Raise your hand. I mean, Sherry? if you have an idea. Hmm? Sherry? Sir? Share something? Uh -huh. Okay, so Jenny says it's about sharing something. Yeah, has, it has to do with that. Anyone else? Thank you, Leo, Jenny. Maybe yeah. present work or ideas that is not ours. Ah, okay, very good. Work or ideas that are not our ideas. Very good. I've heard someone else. I don't know if if uh, if you could raise your hand so I can see your names and ask you one by one. Okay, thank you, Elu. Tell me. Yes, this uh, like plagiarism. 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 Mm -hmm. If um, uh, when a student or some student. Mm -hmm. Student uh, present a work, uh, mm -hmm. for example, an essay, an essay, uh, but they copy exactly where the other, the the, the other, uh, other student or mm -hmm. other people mm -hmm. have done, have, have done that, that, that essay or that for that investigation mm -hmm. and they put their names in the in the top of the on the paper the, uh, on the paper uh, uh, trying to 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 uh, pre to present the work that is uh, done by by the by by them Mm -hmm. by, by by him by by her mm -hmm. or, or this is a, a common situation in the universities and in in the in high school mm -hmm. or, or now that we can find in the internet or in the monogram monogram you say mm -hmm. monogram is correct to say monogram is this right mm, it depends in, monogram in being investigation work that people like a thesis oh no that would be thesis uh -huh. it's a thesis uh -huh. yeah uh, because thesis. monogram is something different it's whenever you have something with your initials uh-huh oh no the mm -hmm. thesis, thesis uh this is project they just copy another thesis from other uh, universities mm -hmm. and they change some words and uh, actually, it's a uh, 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 by now. By now, there is a software in in the 
in the intelli artificial intelligence mm -hmm. that came uh, uh, that that came uh, invest that came discover when we we have pla pla plagiarism 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 that is my opinion excellent very good Eliu. you you used a lot of ideas a lot of words and actually you're totally right okay so plagiarism right it's that it's whenever you are presenting a paper <clears throat> that you know be a an essay um your thesis project as as Eliu was saying right i'm going to um i'm going to tighten here this is project. It's whenever you have, you know, that, uh, I would say it's a requirement for you to graduate from high school or from the university. You have to present or you have to deliver a presentation about your thesis project. Also essays, right? Homework, right? And whenever you have homework, et cetera, written homework, right? Written homework. So when that happens, guys, it's, this I'm going to I'm going to summarize what um, Eliu said because actually all his ideas are describing what plagiarism is and he gave you some examples, but it's just whenever you cut and paste. Okay, you cut and paste someone else's ideas, and you just paste it on your paper on a Word document on Excel, PowerPoint, etc. And you say, "Oh, here is my homework," and you just as Eliu said, you just add your name on it and you said this is mine and actually it's not right it's somebody else's ideas so that is plagiarism right very good and as Elie was saying also there is um, a software and there are also websites that help uh, teachers to identify who is committing plagiarism, right? Because actually nowadays, guys, there are many laws and regulations that can get you in trouble if you are using, you know, um, somebody else's ideas or somebody else's work, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look, okay? Let's see how serious is plagiarism. Wow, well, in El Salvador, that would be kind of debatable, right? But it says, scan the first paragraph of the article. What does the word plagiarism mean? Okay, so raise your hand if you want to help me reading, please. But raise your hand so I can see your names and I know who wants to participate, please. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, besides Eliu, anyone else? Okay, well, Eliu, can you please help me with the first paragraph? Okay. Recently, a biology teacher in Kansas, a state in the American Midwest, made national and even international news after Christine Pelton discovered that 28 of the her 118 students had plagiarized, plagiarized parts of a major project. She gave then failing grade, although this was the school policy. The student's parent complained. The school board director, Miss Pelton, to change the punishment. They told her that 600 points should be taken from the offenders rather than the entire 1,800 point Mrs. Pelton res resigned in protest. Okay, thank um, you so much. Elio. Well, let's go ahead and just very quickly, right, um, discuss here the situation. Uh, well, no, let's see. I have many hands, so let's go ahead and read and then we discuss. Uh, so let's continue with the second one. That's going to be Claudia Marcela, then Rafael, and then Ceci. So Claudia, Marcela, can you please help me? I'm going to just erase over here my drawings, and I'm going to move here so you can read the next part, okay? And that's going to be this one. Give me a second. Here we go. Can you please help me reading, Claudia? Okay. <clears throat> Why did, did this become such a significant story? Perhaps 
it is because so many people feel strongly about what's right and wrong, although the incident may soon be forgotten, it raised some important questions. What is plagiarism? How serious is it? Okay, thank you very much. Now let's continue with the next part. Let me check. I'm going to go up. I think we have more. Okay, here we have. So can you please continue, Rafael? The simplest form of, of plagiarism occurs when someone copies material without giving credit to the source. However, there are also more serious forms, such as when a student pays someone else to write an essay. Okay, essay, very good. Just give me a moment, then let's continue, Ceci, and that's going to be the next one. I'm going to go down. If, if there are more people that want to read, so you can help me, because actually we have more paragraphs. So, Ceci, can you continue, please? Okay. Some people claim that copying is necessary to do well in school. They have <laughs> realized that their own words are not as good as someone else. Uh, another common argument in that everyone does, does it. And so it's not a big deal. In fact, it has been learning that even some highly respect figures, including Martin Luther King Jr. Um, have a plagiarism. scene. Plagiarized. Okay, thank you very much. Ceci, anyone else who wants to continue reading? Just let me erase here the the chart. The 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 the, the what is it called? The square. Okay, anyone else? Someone else? Thank you, Rebecca, and then Sulma. So Rebecca, please. <clears throat> Also, some people find reasons to justify plagiarism. Others feel the issue is clear, is clear cut. They feel it's morally wrong and consider it stealing a thief of ideas rather than money. Mm -hmm. These people believe that the students who plagiarize benefit unfairly. Mm -hmm. They receive a better grade than they deserve. Excellent, very good. Thank you so much. And Sulma, please. Uh, okay, so what about the incident in Kansas? Was the original pushment to severe? Do teachers have the right to tell students and parents what's right or wrong? Mrs. Mr. Pelton would probably say that the job at teacher is to do exactly that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Now let's go ahead and check some important things, okay? First, first, in, uh, first things first, we're going to check some vocabulary uh, words, okay? And pronunciation. Let's see, it's going to be this one. So it says, acá, biology, right? Biology. Uh, plagiarized. Plagiarized. Remember, guys, in English, okay, there is only one, one, I would say, situation, only in one situation, we can um, pronounce, right, a, a word, oh, oops, sorry, a uh, verb, right, if it's not with T or D, we're going to go ahead and say, for example, if I say visit, visit. So if I want to say it in simple past or past participle, that would be visited. If I say it land, aterrizar, that land, landed, aterrizar, landed. But whenever we have voiced sounds and voiceless, voiceless sounds, okay, this one will depend, you know, uh, I mean, the T sound or the D sound will depend on the type of sound that it contains at the end, right? So in this case, for example, the pronunciation, 
of um, this would be um, ed sound ed right ed passed. So in this case, if it's plagiarized, I'm not, I'm not going to say plagiarize it, right? Because if you if you hear, you know, there's a vibration, right? In the in the z, right? Like v, okay, v v. If you touch your throat you will be able to feel the vibration. So how does it work, teacher? In this case, Z, it's a voiced sound. So that means that the sound is going to be with the letter D. Z is voice, that's going to be D. If it's voiceless, that's going to be T. Teacher, but how do I know? I mean, how do I identify, okay? how to pronounce those verbs, okay? Very quickly. Yo sé que me voy a ir más allá por el básico cuatro, creo yo, cuando vieron esto, pero sí creo que lo vamos a ver así rapidín. Vamos a ver. In English, well, let's talk about, about this. Ya que nos metimos acá, veamos un repasito así rapidito, okay? Vamos a, voy a ponerlo de cero, okay? So pronunciation, this is going to be the topic. Pronunciation of ED, okay, in English, okay? So teacher, you were saying that we have three different sounds, yes. The first one is ED, okay? The second one is T sound, and the third one is T sound. Listen, ED, those are the three sounds, okay, at the end of a verb. So, for example, in the first one, oops, sorry, I'm going to do it like this, okay, I'm going to take this one, and we're going to have some examples, okay. Um, all the verbs ending in T and in D, okay, will be pronounced with ETH at the end. For example, teacher, want, wanted, okay, very good. If it's C, need, oops, sorry, need, needed, listen. So this verb ends in T, this one ends in D, okay? So the first sound, solo voy a pronunciar ED, only, only, only when the verb ends in T and D sound want need wanted needed okay so teacher does this one have to do with sound i mean voiceless or voiced no esta es la única pronunciación de los verbos que no tiene que ver si es es, es eh, sonora o no de acuerdo entonces that's going to be the first sound okay now let's move. What happens with the other one? I'm going to go up here because I don't want to spoil. <laughs> okay, what I was doing here. Okay, there we go. So what happens here? Well, when I have the second sound, this one is t sound, okay? T. Okay, no es t. Ok, recordemos que estos no son letras, son sounds, sonidos, right? So, whenever I have voiceless, ok, this one's voiceless, oops, sorry, voiceless sounds, ok, I'm going to pronounce it with a t sound, ok? Example, teacher, well, the first one is the p sound, ok, that's going to be helped, ok, oops, sorry. Help. I wait. Ahí está. Okay, there we go. Help. And then helped. Helped. The second sound is k. k. Okay. That's going to be look. Looked. Okay. Look. Looked. Okay. Then we have the f sound. No es f. Is sound okay? That's gonna be like in this one. Oops, sorry. Okay, laugh, laughed, 
laugh. Oh, she laughed about my joke. She laughed about my joke. Laughed. Okay. Then we have the, uh, well, actually, this one, it's not as, it's, uh, this one is GH. Uh -huh. There is another one before the f sound. Okay. For example, sniff. Sniff, right? Sniff is like um, whenever you are crying and you make that sound that, um, I don't know. I remember when I was a child, <laughs> when I was a child, um, it was like kind of, I don't know, how can I say it in Spanish? Oler, that's sniff, okay? Olfatear, an active sound of, you know, smelling something, that's sniff, okay? So sniff, if, I, if I'm going to use it in the past form, okay? That's going to be something like this, okay? Sniffed, 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 right? Then we have another sound, okay? And that is the sh sound, sh, sh. For example, teacher, wash, okay, sh. And then if I say it in the past, it's going to be wash, washed. I washed my hands after the meeting. I washed my hands before dinner. Then we have another sound that's going to be ch, right? Ch, right? This one like in watch, okay? Watch, okay? Then in the past, that's going to be washed, watched. Okay, another sound that we need to be uh, where I uh, mean careful with is s double s sound, right? For example, kiss. Oh, she kissed her baby good night. She kissed her boyfriend after the movie. Okay, she kissed her mother on the cheek, right? Another sound that is voiceless, it's like, it's this sound, like in dance, right? Dance. It's, ooh, a penita se oye, dance. So that's going to be in past, that's going to be danced. Oh, I danced with my best friend, or I danced with my father during my wedding, right? Dance, danced. And then the last sound is going to be X sound okay like fixed right fixed 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 okay this is this we need to be very careful guys no son letras son sonidos okay and if we have voiceless sounds that's going to be t pronunciation t. if it's t or d estas no son sonidos estas sí son las letras Pero esos de acá sí son sonidos. Esas son letras. Si terminan t o t, right? That's going to be e t sound. Okay. Now, what happens with the other one? Cuando voy a, voy a pronunciarla como una d, como la, el ejemplo que acabamos de ver, plagiarized. Okay. So, si estas son las voiceless, okay, estas son las Estos son los voiced sounds, okay? Teacher, what does that mean? ¿Qué significa eso? Los voiced sounds es como que digamos los sonoros y los no sonoros. Estos son los no sonoros. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué, teacher? Porque estos voiceless sounds que yo produzco solo son aire. Por ejemplo, p, p, help, look, k, k. it's just air coming out of your uh, lungs passing through your throat, coming out of your mouth. Okay, es solo aire. Pero estos que están acá abajo, los voiced sounds, esos son diferentes. ¿Por qué? Porque si usted se toca la, la garganta, bueno, pues obvio en el cuello. ¿verdad? Si usted se toca su parte del cuello acá y siente la vibración de, al generar ese sonido. Por ejemplo, el primero sería este. L sound, 
for example, like coal. Toque su garganta. Coal. There is a vibration coming out of your throat. So when I have this verb, that's going to be cold. Cold. I called a friend yesterday. I called my mom for her birthday. Cold. Then the second sound would be N. Mm. If you touch your throat, you can you can feel the vibration, right? So like in clean, clean. And then if you use it, I mean, if you use the past form, that's going to be cleaned. I cleaned my room during the weekend. I cleaned my desk for the meeting, right? Then there is another sound, the R sound, right? Offered. Oops, sorry. Offered. Uh, feel the vibration. Sienta esa vibración al, al decir la, la, el, el verbo en su garganta, right? Offer. Offer. Then what happens when I say that in the past? That's going to be offered. Offered. Oh, I offer. I offered her a new job, or I offer, offered a, um, what, to bring some snacks, you know, to the class. I offered a new proposal, right? Then there is another sound that's coming like, sound, like damage. It's this is a sound, right? Damage. Solo sienta esa última vibración. Esta creo que es de esas que vibra bastante. Damage. Zh, zh, right? So in the past, or the past participle form, it's going to be damaged. Damaged. Right? Damaged. Then we have this one. Este es super hiper mega sonora. Right? The v, v, v. Right? Like in love. Love. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I loved my new house. I loved my haircut. Loved, right? Then we have, um, right? This one is super, hyper mega sonora. Like um, in what? Oh, well, before we got with this one, but that, but I can, no, 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 Use, right? Used. Oh, I used my phone yesterday. I mean, after class, because I have some questions. Used, right? Then we have the, this one, que es bastante sonora. The, like in amazed. Oh, um, it was, I was amazed. Amazed, right? Amazed. The sound, right? Um, this one, the b sound, like in robbed, right? Robbed. Okay. Oops, sorry. Robbed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then, if I want to use in past, since it is a um, one syllable verb, I need to duplicate the last consonant and I say robbed. Robbed. Oh, I robbed her. Uh, I robbed the cat's belly. Robbed. Right, and then the M sound, right? Like in claim, claim, right? Claim, oops. claimed, claimed, right? This is we had to be careful, guys. Hay que tener mucho cuidado con eh, cómo pronunciamos. Si quieren, se lo voy a pasar aquí en el en el chat de un solo esto para que les quede. Yo sé que probablemente ya lo habían visto, ¿verdad? Y que me regresé un poquito allá al principio, pero es importante que lo sepamos, ¿ok? Ahí está en el chat, por si lo quieren. Yo lo que hago es que cuando estoy en una clase, cuando soy estudiante y mandan algo en el chat, solo lo abro y tomo captura de pantalla y luego lo, lo noto, ¿verdad? si se quiere. Entonces, no sé si quedó claro, chicos, esto de cómo se pronuncian verbs in past. Questions? No questions? 
Bye, perfect, okay, very good. Espero pues nos ayude. Por supuesto, chicos, let me tell you something. Déjeme decirles algo. <laughs> You're welcome, Claudia Marcela. Eh, déjeme decirles algo. En lo verbos en pasado, yo creo que es una de las cosas que así, ah, mire, rapidito nos detectan cuando nosotros pues queremos como... Eh, hallarle, ¿verdad? Imitarle ahí los sonidos, pero nosotros rapiditos nos, nos, nos detectan porque hay sonidos que no son parte de nuestro sistema fonológico. Por lo tanto, nos cuesta el doble producirlos. Así que, do not feel, you know, um, bad if, if it's, it's, it's difficult at the beginning. Don't worry, just practice, practice and practice. Like, for example, in my case, I am not perfect at it, right? So, uh, the, the, you know, a native speaker would definitely identify that I am not a native speaker because actually the sounds I produce are not the same as the ones they produce, right? Así que este tema, chicos, de hecho, es importante mencionar que incluso ni ellos a veces saben por qué los pronuncian así, pero aquí yo les explico el por qué, ¿verdad? Y pues es por los voiced, voiceful sounds, y por la terminación en TND que tenemos en algunos perros. Bye. Entonces, let's continue. Um, what else? Well, here we have, um, I think it, there was another one. Let me take out my, here my drawing tool. Aquí está. Okay, this one. Although, although, right? It's un poco rara la palabra, pero although, aunque, ¿verdad? Although, um, complained. Right, ahora ya sabemos, ¿verdad? Que este va en los voiced, complained, right? The school board directed, la, 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 punishment, pa, punishment, ok. Um, creo que estamos bien. Ah, resigned, resigned. Ah, ya sabemos, ¿verdad? Que esconde, ok, because here we had the in sound, resigned. Muy bien. Entonces, let's continue. I'm um, going to erase all my drawings and I'm going to go here. Okay. Por aquí había visto algo otro. Quiero ver. Okay. Veamos. Um, significant. Significant. Right. Aquí está tal vez. Although. Forgotten. Raised. Ah, ya sé, ¿verdad? Que es con... D sound for the sonido, raised, raised, right? What is plagiarism, right? Very good. Now the next one, bear with me. Vamos acá. Otra vez el drawing tool. Eh, source, okay, esta es otra. Source. Resource, ¿verdad? Está también recurso, resource, source. Ok. Um, essay, essay, ensayo, ¿verdad? Essay. Generalmente cuando usted va a hacer como una, una certificación, ¿verdad? Si usted va a hacer una certificación para su trabajo, como son todas las, las, las macro skills, las que revisan, las revisan a veces el, el, el listening, el, el writing, les revisan a veces grammar, les revisan a veces speaking, ¿verdad? Entonces, si es uh, writing el que le van a revisar, muy probablemente le van a pedir, escriba un ensayo sobre este tema. So, write an essay about this topic, right? Uh, copying, copying, right? Necessary. Necessary. Realized. Realized. Realized is darse cuenta de algo. Oh, I realized I forgot my book at the university. Realized. Um, let me see. Argument. 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 Aquí también escuché. That's learned. Como es con voiced sound, entonces es learned con D. Uh, plagiarized. Let me see. Still in. No, es que no escuché. Ok, let's see. Vamos a ver si nos hace falta algo. Over here. Um, punishment. Ya lo habíamos visto. 
probably say a job of the teacher is to do exactly that. Okay. Well, guys, this was a very interesting um, reading, right? And I would like to listen to uh, probably uh, your opinions, right? So here you have to organize the sentences from one to six. But I think, I think, guys, um, you have already done that in the um, in the exercise, right? So, guys, it says complete the chart. Arguments to justify plagiarism and arguments against plagiarism. Okay, so I want you to think, quiero que piense, what would be an argument to justify plagiarism? Like to say something like, aquí, porque en este artículo we have several, ¿verdad? Entonces, quisiera escuchar esas opinions that you have y after reading the article, right, because as you can, as you can read, you know, um, there are some people that are in favor, others are against. Así que me gustaría escuchar sus opiniones. But raise your hand if you want to participate. So arguments in favor to justify plagiarism. Anyone? A favor del plagiarism? Arguments to justify it? Tal vez no a favor, pero sí justificarlo. Anyone? No, no one. <laughs> Diga, Melio. Yes, one. Uh, an argument to justify the plagiarism. Uh, when a, a topic is uh, a special investigation, for example, mm -hmm. if a scientific is scientific uh, term, uh, Tema, uh, topic. Uh, topic. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's difficult to, to invent, to to write or, or to make a, uh, any invest investigation about uh, a theme that the specialist drives very well. Mm -hmm. um, in Spanish, they say los que los que crearon ya se murieron los que parieron ya ya se murieron mm -hmm. I don't know how to say that in English mm -hmm. but uh, there are some for example is uh, some genius has right has written about some topics mm -hmm. like uh, something that is a uh, uh, that belong to the science that mm -hmm. is proved with the with with the with the step that this and the scientific the scientific process is, mm -hmm. is uh, in use. Uh, I think that is not exactly a, a reason and and uh, justify, but uh, we can use the other work, but we must to write that we mm -hmm. copy that from that that that, that inventor or, mm -hmm. or that anybody else wrote about this topic. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If we put the sort of or we change or or we we explain in the bio and the biograph and the bibliography. Mm -hmm. that we pick up from another author, uh, I think that it just is justified to plagiarism. Mm -hmm. It's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, Elio. Anyone else? Anyone else? Or an argument against plagiarism also? Mm-hmm. Yes, tell me, Sandra. The teacher is justifying plagiarism. Pla este, mm -hmm. is some, some student eh, no plagiar, plagiarism. Me cuesta la palabra. Plagiarism. plagiarism. Pla the verb? Okay, the noun, <laughs> el, el nombre es plagiarism. That is the noun. The verb is plagiarize. Uh -huh. Uh, is some student no plagiarize, uh, they they will be at this this at 
ventajas como desventaja mm. eh, en inglés no no disadvantage algo así se pronuncia advantage de ventaja oh disadvantage disadvantage mm -hmm. they will be in disadvantage in compare the other student mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good point. I like that. Thank you so much, guys, to you both. Now, guys, obviously, I mean, it, it, there is something important to say here about plagiarism. Um, plagiarism is, as you know, some of you have already said, is to use somebody else's ideas or work and to use it as if it's yours when it is not. So how to avoid plagiarism? Well, there is something called the APA. Teacher, what is APA? APA, if you look for the meaning of APA, is the American Psychological Association. Teacher, what is that? <laughs> the APA stands for American Psychological Association, and this is often the standard format used in the social sciences. It's a consistent way for writers to document sources and avoid plagiarism. Hmm, y entonces, teacher, ¿es bueno o es malo? Well, guys, actually, this APA format helps you, helps you to express, right, to use somebody else's ideas. Este, este documento le ayuda a usted a usar las ideas de alguien más sin apropiarse de ellas, porque le da crédito. ¿Cómo así, teacher? Well, well, here we have an example, right? Eh, basic format, este es uno de los formatos, ¿verdad? Dentro del APA, en donde, de, donde yo menciono al autor, ¿verdad? Y a, o autores, el año, eh, the title of the article, o el title del journal, donde salió, the volume numbers, eh, etc. O sea, todo esto es para citar a los autores que vamos a utilizar en nuestros trabajos. Eso es el APA. Entonces, citing To cite a direct quote in APA, you must include the author's last name, se incluye el, el apellido, the year, el año, and page number, ¿verdad? Y en la página de donde usted sacó eso, all separated by commas. By separated, porque está con una T al final, y tiene sonido ID, separated by commas. In the quote, if the quote appears on a single page, use P, solo una página. If it spans a range base, entonces se usa PP cuando va de una página a otra, ¿verdad? Etcétera. Entonces, en sí, plagiarism es el crimen de no darle crédito a quien de verdad lo merece, porque no son mis ideas, son las de alguien más. Pero si usted usa el APA format, el formato APA, para expresar o para usar esas ideas y darles crédito a los otros, no hay ningún problema. You can do that. ¿Ok? Vaya, chicos, ya se me está acabando el tiempo, right? And I really hope we learn something new today together, right? And we're going to continue tomorrow. So what I'm going to do right now is to um, pass the attendance. Y pues luego vamos a, a finalizar la clase. Nuevamente invitarlos, chicos. Si tienen preguntas, no duden en traerlas. I love your questions, ¿ok? Pero si no las tienen, pues qué bueno, porque entonces la mayoría de los temas están claros. Pero si no, dígame, teacher, no entendí esto. ¿Lo puedo explicar? Y yo con mucho gusto, pues lo vuelvo a explicar, no hay problema. Bueno, comenzamos. Alba, dir por tal días. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Here. Thank you. Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Present teacher. Thank you. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. Present. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Here. Thank you. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Present. Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you, Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present, teacher. Thank you, Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Here. Thank you, Jenny Lisette Campos Martínez. Present, teacher. Thank you, José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present, teacher. Thank you, José Francisco Peña Peña. Present, teacher. Thank you, José Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present, teacher. 
Thank you. Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present teacher. Thank you, Mayra. Mayra Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you, Maria Azucena. Then Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Present. Thank you, Marta Ruz Enrique Reyes. Present. Thank you, Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you, eh, Nady Ivis Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you, Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you, Rebecca Estefanía Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, Jensi Marlene León López. Present, teacher. Thank you, and Zulma Beatriz Pérez Caldames. Present. Fine, thank you so much, guys, everyone, for being here. Um, eh, well, let's continue tomorrow. Remember that this week is your last week in this level, so try to finish or complete all the exercises, and if you have questions, more than welcome for tomorrow's class, okay? So thank you for joining. Have a good night, and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Good night, guys. Bye-bye.